Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and I am back with another guillotine deathless challenge and here is a guide on how to navigate through the second challenge 8.2.6 completion with an alternate path. I received quite a few comments which outlined that the region was really difficult to navigate around Bahamut with the heel sponge node. So I thought you know what, let's look for another path that can be used and avoid the region node totally. To complete this challenge, you are only allowed to use Guillotine, Guillotine 2099, Purgatory and Morningstar of any rarity. My favorite choices are Guillotine 2099 and Morningstar. You also have to skip the choice node before the Bahamut boss. For alternate path, we are going to do a mixture of two nodes. We are going to start with Civil Warrior path with Weapon X, Inferno X gene. And then once we take down Captain Britain, we are going to switch to Tactical Skateboard Path with Daredevil's Hell's Kitchen. This will allow us to skip Sponge Node for Bahamut and instead we will face the Armor Infection Node. Now with this one, I took down the boss Bahamut with Guillotine 2099 in, two, in 10 minutes solo on my second attempt. So stay tuned for that at the end of the video. So the first fight is against Civil Warrior. There is Tenacity Node, so remember not to attack after parry until the parry, unless the parry sticks. Wait for the heavy attack trigger and then attack back. Push Civil Warrior to SP1 and then evade one of the hits to disable the weapon. Once the weapon is disabled, swipe back, back to the end of the stage and evade on the wall to capture the weapon. Similar to last fight, the goal here is to evade a special attack so you can disable the weapon then evade a hit at the wall to capture the weapon for yourself so let's build up kingpin to sp1 and now we're going to wait for him to trigger sp1 now i'm going to evade the last hit now you will notice that the weapon is disabled now i will slowly just go back in the, my corner of the map and try to evade a hit in the wall right now i am trying to build up to an sp3 as well so right there, I'm going back into the wall. I'm going to evade one hit that's going to capture the weapon. Now, if it hits me on my block, I am going to apply passive incinerates. Now you keep Kingpin to an SP1 and take care of that unstoppable heavy attack. And I am using a Morningstar here. I continue to build her. And once I have four charges after an SP3, I get perfect block. So I don't need to worry about Kingpin hitting into my block and me taking more damage. I am able to tank most of uh, his uh, basic attacks. And yeah, and just like that, rinse and repeat, and you can take them down. Now the first three fights are going to be difficult because there's a lot of setup and it takes quite a bit of time to disable the weapon and it might be annoying. So whatever you do, when you have the weapon, when the weapon is active on the defender, do not hit in the block. Otherwise, it will apply passive incinerates to you and you will lose out uh, on health and you will die. So yeah, the first three fights are going to be a little careful. But then after that, it's much easier and you can get through the boss quite uh, with little to less revives.
The following fight is going to be Captain Britain. Both of her specials are easy to evade. But I would suggest evading her SP1 for easy weapon disable. Then you can capture the weapon with a wall dex on your side. Now if you have a guillotine 2099, I think this will be a really good fight to bring her to build her to 100 combo with an SP3 at 5% defender health. And also you will get class advantage so this should be a good fight for you to build up your guillotine 2099 here. Now, I am bringing two guillotines so I'm going to build both of them up. This is my 6 star version, I've also brought the 7 star version and both of them will be really helpful against Bahamut. Again for this fight you will notice right now I've already captured the weapon and I'm throwing my SP2. So the name of the game here is capture the weapon and then let them hit in your block, let them get some incinerate and you can retaliate back after they're heavy just like this and you can do quite a bit of damage and get them down. Again this is the last fight that is going to be annoying that will take a bit of time to bring down but then the other meaning of the path is easier because we'll switch to uh, another path and that is much easier with guillotine 2099 and getting to Bahamut boss. Now fight number 4 is going to be against Daredevil's Hell's Kitchen. We will take a ride from the fork and we will go to Daredevil's Hell's Kitchen. Now he can be very annoying to deal with if we are not careful with his parry shrug offs. Easy way is to block until he triggers a heavy attack and you can retaliate. But remember blocking Daredevil's hit will give him power with uh, kinetic transference and may nudge him to an SP3. Push him to an SP1 which I find it's easier to evade to disable the weapon node and after an easy SP1 out an attacker it will give you the weapon node and ability to gain cruelty with every hit and the huge kits, crits to finish up the fight faster. Now very important here is to finish off with an SP3 if you are using guillotine 2099 so you can have the 100 hit startup against a very nasty apocalypse coming up. So right here you are noticing that I am doing crit on every hit because I have the weapon node for me. So I am just trying to bait out a special one here. And I am going to go back and do all of that damage. The weapon node is almost disabled so I am just gonna dex out the SP2 here. Wait for the weapon node cooldown and then let him throw a SP1 at me right here. Now he's got an SP1, I should be able to evade that. But also at this point I have 154 hits. So I don't need to worry about getting the weapon node, I can just do enough energy damage and bring him down to 10% as well. So he's down to 11%. 
Now after this one, a couple of more hits, he will be down to 5%. I can throw my SP3 and bring him down and have the next fight ready with 100 hits. Probably the nastiest fight of the path at number 5 against Apocalypse. His SP1 is easy to evade to disable the weapon, but he gains a lot of power with his multi-hit special attacks. These hits during specials keep giving him power with kinetic transference, enabling him to trigger back-to-back -back specials. If the weapon node is on recharge, those block hits will also be critical and cause you a lot of pain and damage. Now I like to bring in Guillotine 2099 with Huntress Protocol for bigger crits and every 20th hit to finish the fight faster. You can do it without as well. I have really learned in the last few uh, months how to trigger the SP2, so if you know that, that will be handy. Now don't bother to save for an SP3, just spam SP1s or SP2s on, 20 hit, on your 20th hit to finish off before if it gets really ugly. But if you are good with dexing an SP2, you can keep pushing into SP2 and then finish off with an SP3. So it depends how good are with the, how good you are to take out his specials. Now push up Apocalypse to SP2 only if you can evade them. Otherwise, stick to SP1 evade, capture the weapon as soon as possible, and you can use those cruelty buffs to annihilate Apocalypse. Finish off with an SP3 if you are good with the SP2 dex. So you are ready on the next fight with another 100 hit combo. The final fight of the path is going to be Crossbones. Bring back your guillotine 2099 you used against Apocalypse to build it back to 100 hit counter and to finish off with an sp3 when you knock out crossbones but if you are good with apocalypse special evade and you finish with 100 hits even better now i personally find the sp2 lasts it easier to evade from crossbones to disable the weapon but uh, if you know the timing on the sp1 evade second hit that is much more easy to evade and disable the weapon and you can throw an sp1 after that to capture it for yourself now once you capture the weapon, it will help you gain cruelty and huge criticals to finish off the fight faster. Now remember, it is very important to finish the fight with an SP3, so you can start with 100 hits and take full advantage of guillotine 2019 pre-fights against Bahamut.
Before you start the fight, if you're using guillotine 2099 like me, which incidentally is the only best allowed champ for the guillotine pool against Bahamut, I mean OG guillotine also comes near but G2099 takes the cake for me. Make sure that you have finished the last fight with an SP3 so you can start with 100 hits and you can choose to keep both of your armors for that tankiness and standing through the fight or you can also choose to activate your huntress protocol and the crit protocol for extra damage and uh, and heals so it t totally depends on you i did not uh, activate uh, any of the pre-fight so i'm just going to use it without so i can have more tankiness here now it is also advisable to boost that it will help you do 100 uh, it will help you do more damage and also heal you more once you're above 100 hits if you have activated that protocol now in phase 1, 100% HP to 81% HP, I like to start with a couple of heavy attacks to gain those hit counter guards. The goal here is to stay near Bahamut when the Gamma timer is about to expire to give him volatility charges. Once Bahamut gains 3 volatility charges and triggers an SP1, he will hurl a radiation blast towards the attacker. Now ensure you have an SP1 ready, trigger the SP1 into the blast. This will give you a removal charge and knock down Bahamut with a special attack or heavy to remove his celestial armor. While having the removal charge you do 4 damage. Use your striker to chain combos and get specials faster. Phase 2, 80% to 41% HP, build your removal charges the same way as in Phase 1 by triggering a special attack into the Radiation Blast by Bahamut and the end of his SP1 animation when he has 3 volatility charges. Now once you have the removal charges, use a well-timed parry or a heavy attack to reflect the next Radiation Blast onto Bahamut to knock him down and remove the Celestial Armor. Once the armor is removed, Bahamut will take full damage. Use your striker to chain combos and align your SP2 with the 28 hit on your hit counter for huge criticals on every hit of SP2 if you activated the Huntress protocol. The stability protocol will also heal you up tremendously and give you a lot of sustain. At this point guys, it's all about the hit counter. The higher your hit counter, the more damage you will do. So every now and then whenever I can sneak in a heavy attack, I usually sneak it in so my combo is up and it's not removed because that is very important for guillotine 2099.
Phase 3 starts at 40% to 10% health. It is the same as Phase 2 in terms of mechanics and how you gain removal charges to disable Bahamut's celestial armor to deal full damage. The only exception is Bahamut will now randomly throw heat charges that are orange in color and you cannot reflect back but can only evade. But not to worry, the heat radiation blast does not utilize the 3 volatility charges required to trigger them. This will help reduce the setup time for radiation blast triggers. Use a heavier parry to reflect the radiation blast back to Bahamut to knock him down and disable his celestial armor. Once celestial armor is disabled, Bahamut is open for damage. So just you've noticed that we gain 3 removal charges right now and now my goal is to push him to a special and build up those three volatility charges that you see as a yellow icon under Bahamut's bar. So when the timer is about to expire on on the charges, you can be near Bahamut and he will gain a volatility charge. So right now there are two on him. Now I am trying to stay near. The timer is paused during special attacks. So that's something you need to take care about. I just threw my SP2 here because I just need to dump power i like to be to be at sp1 uh, i like to be at sp1 against bahamut so right here there is the sp1 and now i was about to throw a heavy but because it's a radiation blast i have to evade it so you need to take care like which one is the orange blast and which one is the yellow blast uh, because we can only reflect back the yellow blast so right here i am waiting for him to throw an sp1 again because he's got some good volatility charges built up and I've sneaked in a heavy again and I got some regen because of my armor so we are doing good here here is the yellow blast with the heavy attack I reflected and here look at the damage I am doing because I have 434 hits in my kit counter and we brought him down to phase 4 the final phase 10% and below you will gain a permanent removal charge and you can only use well time parry to reflect the radiation blast. Bahamut will also gain the ability to reflect back the same blast towards you creating a small ping pong style game. Every time you reflect the blast on Bahamut his celestial armor potency is reduced and helps you do more damage. Once Bahamut is at 5% or below health just use an sp3 so guillotine 2099 for an instant knockout. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it helpful. This was an alternate path for you guys to avoid heel punch Bahamut altogether. I took your feedback in and I thought, you know what, this video is needed. So here it is. Please leave a like and a comment down below and subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet already. And I will see you on the next one. Bye.